this is it. Doesn't look like much, but this is where the action is. This is a reverse osmosis membrane. The key to mankind's sustainable future, in my opinion. One of the keys, I should say. It's just a little piece of plastic, really. A finely engineered piece of plastic. And uh, this particular piece of reverse osmosis membrane is ready to go for our test setup. Here's the membrane holder. Notice it's got the inlet port and the concentrate outlet port. That water just goes up through those channels across the membrane and back out. And that membrane is just sandwiched in between here over the top. And the sandwich between the bottom part and this top part, the clean water goes up through that membrane and through these holes and out our permeate outlet. So we take this membrane test cell over to our big system. It's not pretty, but it's highly functional. Here's our GE Osmonics test cell. We take that cell holder and we squeeze it in there at about 1200 PSI to get those O-rings with a nice seal. And then we'll take this bar out of the middle and we'll connect that cell holder up. All right, so let's look at the flow, pro or the flow uh, system here. Here's our feed tank, just an old tank that we found in the lab. Wish we found it for me the other day. And the feed water comes out of the bottom of that feed tank through this little bitty tube down to our high pressure pump there. High pressure pump is needed because we're going to do at least 700, 800 PSI and usually I run it at 1000 PSI. So we have a 1.5 horsepower motor there running that nice big cap pump. Now all the steel is 316 stainless steel for good corrosion resistance and um, in the high pressure parts we're using that stainless steel tubing. So the pressurized water comes out, comes up there to the test cell like we saw and then we just take the the concentrate from the test cell and it keeps going. So we have two pressure gauges. We have a digital pressure gauge connected to the computer and an analog pressure gauge to verify. Then we've got a valve here, which is pretty important to give us that high pressure. We just tighten that valve down, get up to our 800,000 PSI. Secondary valve there too. And then that water goes on up through that tube back toward the feed tank. But before it gets to the feed tank, it goes through this heat exchanger to cool it down a little bit doesn't get too hot in one pass, but we make sure it doesn't get too hot over many passes by running it through this heat exchanger here. We've just got a coil of tubing down there immersed in water, and that water is fed through our cooling unit. Then the water from the feed, or the concentrate water, I guess, goes back to the feed tank, and there's our loop. So you're wondering where the clean water goes. Well, it comes out of the tank, and it's not connected yet, but we'll hook up a tube to bring it over here to this balance. We'll put a beaker on the balance and run that tube into the balance. And then this balance is connected to the computer so that over time we can measure the permeate productivity. And that little um, probe there is a connectivity probe so that we can check our permeate quality. And the computer that I was talking about is this little guy over here. It's running some LabVIEW software with a little mouse and ode to Illinois there. A little souvenir from Champaign-Urbana. And we have our LabVIEW software up here so we can control the pump over here, the high pressure pump control. And uh, we can see what our permeate mass is on this little dial. And then we can measure our permeate flow over time and our pressure over time. You can see that it's currently running. Right now it's reading a pressure of 20. So that's off on the set point on the bottom range, but once it gets up to 800 PSI, it's pretty accurate. And uh, we've got a conductivity probe here too, or a conductivity reading, and a couple other uh, conductivity over time and pressure over time graphs so that we can watch what's happening and our flux over time, and yeah, that's our lab view program. So let's go ahead and spark it up real quick. I have it set, so all I have to do is press enter. We can watch the magic happen here. There's our pump, or our motor turning the pump. 
So we're getting some water coming up through. It's going through that tube, bypass line. And um, coming back out. Ooh, let's see if I can focus in here. Coming back out our feed tank. All right, so now you're convinced that there's actually water flowing through there, right? And that was the purpose of pouring that out, I guess. Okay, so that's really about it. We can, uh, we can see that the pressure bumped up to about 70 PSI in this case, because we don't have anything to hold it back. And tomorrow, tomorrow, hopefully, or maybe next week, we'll get some actual clean water flowing out of this system.